Um, thank you for the word. I must say that I am extremely glad to be here uh, to, to listen to your talks um, uh, since I, with every talk I get new ideas what we have to record <laughs> um, uh, from, from leaf litter to, to uh, blueberry vib <laughs> vibrations. And also the dead mouses uh, are also vibrating. So yeah, I, I would really like to um, show you uh, and uh, yeah, how to search for the information in the hidden world of Vibroscape. But let's just uh, start with the definitions. The upper two are uh, totally clear to the audience, so I won't stop there. Um, so uh, and just going to the echo acoustic. Um, um, uh, that was actually uh, published by Swear and Farina in 2015, and this is just one year before Peggy and Andreas published the biotremology uh, uh, paper. And the echoacoustics is like a study of uh, sound to investigate biodiversity and other ecological questions. So in this year, we published a paper where we kind of uh, define uh, ecotremology as a study of vibration to investigate biodiversity and other ecological questions. So, um, yeah, why we think this is uh, needed, actually? Uh, here we have an old picture showing um, uh, the proportion of described species in, 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 in our world. So the big black beetle representing all the insects and the red mite presenting all other arthropods. And you can see that in total there is, a, the, this is a majority actually uh, of uh, described species in the world. Uh, and together with this uh, um, chart from uh, Cockcroft and Rodriguez paper from 2005, um, talking about the insects, you see that yeah, three quarters, the majority of insects is using the way of communications we are talking all these days about. So these two things together, um, yeah, give us an idea that there must be a lot of information. Uh, in 2014, uh, uh, there was a short uh, contribution in science uh, called eavesdropping on ecosystems. And here I would really like to point out that yeah, uh, without recording <laughs> vibrations, we are missing a crucial portion of the available information. Uh, so n not just sound, I, uh, I think we can get a lot of information also from the vibration. Um, so the last definition, um, uh, it's Vibroscape. We define it in a book, a biotermology book from 2019 as a, uh, like all the vibration present in an environment at a certain time. Uh, we did it similar as the soundscape was defined. Um, uh, we divided three categories of vibrations, biological vibrations, geophysical vibrations, and anthropogenic uh, vibrations. Um, I'm most interested in biological vibrations, and we divide this group to vibrational signals um, that, yeah, there are many incidental vibrations uh, done by the activity of animals in the, in the environment. Uh, then we have vibrational component of airborne sound that was also already uh, heard about this. So we can uh, pick up with the uh, laser vibrometers vibrations that are actually uh, coming from the sound source and the plant acoustic emission. And then other two groups that we won't uh, talk about a lot. Um, so yeah, um, now I will just show you the case study we did. It was in here in the middle of uh, Europe, in Slovenia, just a bit south from Ljubljana, in, in not so um, sunny region as this is, where we are now, uh, on a meadow like this. And this meadow looked like this. Uh, so we actually brought all our lab equipment to the, uh, to the meadow, uh, where we observed um, yeah, what's, what's going on uh, uh, directly in the natural environment when the, where the animals are actually living. So here you can see a small red dot. Uh, present, uh, this is a laser uh, we were recording. And then other uh, sensors for uh, temperature, humidity, uh, uh, luminosity, and so on. Um, 
so to gather as much data as we can. So uh, we decided to look for uh, di different things, and one was how things change over the season uh, here in temporal uh, climates and how things change over the day. Um, then we also look at the interaction of individuals in this vibrational community we were recording. Uh, in this, we have like this short temporal coordination in mind. Then we also look at the spatial distribution, but I won't cover this in my talk. This will be uh, the following talks uh, from Becky and Juan. Um, yeah, so the seasonal changing. Uh, we, of course, avoid the winter uh, because we didn't, we didn't record here in Piran. No, okay. Um, so uh, we stay in the field from May till uh, beginning of October. Uh, and here in the upper line, you have box plots that are showing the abundance of uh, vibration, uh, biological vibrations. And the bottom one shows the vibrational signals only. Uh, you can see that in the spring there is a big, dif big difference and this is due to the bird singing. So we could uh, record a lot of uh, uh, bird songs in, in the vibroscape of the meadow. Um, and then uh, um, the lower one shows just the vibrational signals, the things that we think they are vibrational <laughs> signals. And um, you can see that uh, there is a peak in early uh, summer in uh, end, end of June, uh, beginning of July. Uh, so um, this is just a pr short uh, view. So the spring with uh, with you have here a vibrational signal and the birds in orange, and then the summer with a lot of uh, vibrational signals uh, also overlapping, and then the autumn with few vibrational signals and some strange events. Um, in, in total, in whole year, we kind of found 56 different vibrational type. 11 of them were uh, kind of known from which species they come. Uh, all others were just something. Uh, and here I should really point out the importance of an open source library available at some point that we have to construct of all these signals because I saw many signals in these days, <laughs> but yeah, they are just on our computers and, and yeah, so we should really um, put them together. And then another thing is that I also have to emphasize it's uh, after Big and Juan talk, there is also Matthias talk, and he will talk about the automatic recognition of some of the signals that is also needed because we really can't do all manually. <laughs> it's just too easy to gather data than to analyze it. Uh, from this data, we you know, we get to this to um, yeah richness and abundance richness meaning number of different VA uh, vibrational types and abundance the total duration um, yeah and then we run the uh, NMDS on the um, uh, community metrics of these vibrational types in each uh, recording session over the year and we can easily. Uh, distinguish uh, for different groups of vibroscape, uh, so the spring one, early summer, late summer, and the autumn one. Uh, so obviously things are changing over season quite a lot. Uh, then let's go to the day-night um, changes. For this uh, re uh, purpose we stay in the field like 24 hours, three days in a row, recording all the time, then we found out, oh, it's too much data, let's rec let's analyze just half an hour of each of the, the periods, so sunrise, morning, midday, afternoon, sunset, and the midnight. And when we did this, we found out this high fluctuation of, of uh, vibroscape abundance. Uh, with um, every day the peak uh, uh, activity was in the afternoon and this highly correlates with the temperature uh, there in the meadow. So we kind of assume that it could be that it's just too cold to, uh, for animals to communicate during the night because the, uh, during the night hours the activity drops almost to zero. There was just nothing there. Um, yeah, and then the short temporal coordination. Here we have uh, three hours of recording from uh, 9th of July. Um, 
uh, it's 13 different uh, vibrational types and they are uh, uh, coming in, in, in the order uh, presented here. Um, uh, yeah, but from this we can't see much, so we went deeper uh, because we annotate all our uh, vibrational events like this. So we determine the low and the high frequency and the end and the start of the start and the end uh, time. Uh, we then can calculate the overlap, the area of overlap of these squares, um, uh, e either in overlap in time and frequency or just in time, uh, presented with a, a purple line. Uh, and then we got a number, but we couldn't compare this number to anything, so we uh, random, randomly distribute the same amount of vibrational events uh, in the same time period. Uh, and we repeat this thousand times, so we get statistical power, and then we compare this to number. So the observed number from the recording from the field and the calculated randomized uh, overlap, and we found this significant uh, difference. So the, um, the value of overlap was much, much lower in the natural recording. That means that animal individuals, their signaling, try to avoid overlapping uh, just because it makes sense, probably, <laughs> uh, to be uh, efficient. Um, we went a bit further uh, and we took all the early um, summer uh, recordings for this uh, because they, they were like distributed over the whole abundance range, so uh, recordings with very few, uh, with low abundance and high abundance, and we could detect this effect just in the in the recordings where the abundance was high enough, so when the, there, uh, where there was a very low abundance of vibrational signals, we couldn't observe this, so the, the observed value was the same as the one from the randomized model. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Uh, we kind of show the seasonal changes, we show the, um, the how things change over day and night, story gets more complicated when the, uh, Becky will and Juan will present the space. <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah, we found out that we can also look at the, the, um, this um, uh, interaction among individuals there in the natural. Um, and why I think this is very important is because publications like this are coming out every year. Like, uh, the decline of entomofauna, the decline of uh, pollinators, and so on. And I think with, the, with the recording the vibrations in the natural environment, we can be a step further. We can observe these changes before, we, uh, before the decline is there, because uh, probably the, the, um, maybe the animals are more sensitive on the behavior uh, and, and signaling is their behavior and then really not being present there, yeah. So um, I think this is why this is so important. So yeah, at the end I would like to thank to all my co-workers and the other people uh, collaborating with, and yeah, that's it.